Hi guys, this is a follow on video from my guillotine tool video that I put up the other day. I thought I'd make some dies to go with it. Um, obviously it's not much cop without them. Um, so I've cut off four sets and I'm going to make a different uh, tool with each one. Uh, the first one is dead easy, it's just plain square. I'm going to leave it square. That can be used as is for all sorts of things. Um, just flattening, putting a groove in something, um, doing a square tenon, all sorts of things. And at the end of the day, if I don't use it for anything, I can always turn into something else. Uh, the second one, I'm going to put a um, radius on both ends, like a sort of a fullering tool. Now, I'm probably going to start off with quite a uh, a small radius. Um, if it's no good then I can make it smaller as I go. Now the third one, um, what I'm going to do with this one is do a tenoning tool. I'm going to put two holes, um, probably a 3 8 and a or 5 16 maybe in the here um, and 3 8 over here or half inch and 3 8 or whatever. Two popular sizes anyway. Um, and some people might say, well, why have I cut it in half? Why don't I drill it and then cut it? Well, if I do that, when I cut it, I'll lose eighth of an inch for the blade. So consequently, the holes aren't going to be round. So the best way is to do it like this. And then the, th the fourth one, again, is, is sort of pretty simple. It's already made. I just turn the blade when I cut it to 45 degrees. You might think, well, what the hell sort of a tool is that? Well when you turn it round you get a, a cutting tool. It's almost like a side cutter. I probably won't use it as a side as a cutter of any description because it's only sort of mild steel but it's useful for starting off um, tenons, putting decoration down bars, all sorts of things. You can do, do whatever you like with it but again very simple just cut it 45 and turn it round. So that's a, an easy one. Right, well, with all of these, the top tool, I'm going to put a radius across the top here. Uh, it just makes it easier when you're hammering that if you don't hit it dead square on the top, it'll wob, you know, it sort of jars a bit. So if you put a bit of a radius on there, it just makes it that much easier. So I'm going to go over to my little bent, uh, belt grinder and do that now. Here we go, got my belt grinder, it's a 6 inch, very useful tool. Blades getting a, or the belt's getting a bit worn so I'm going to go gently. It still takes it off fairly quickly. Pretty good tool this, use it for all sorts of things. As you can see I'm not putting a huge radius on, just a, a gentle one. So it just makes it easier when you're hitting. It, uh, it sort of, if you hit it a little bit off square, you don't get that jar and you would if it was flat. See, so there it is, nothing too fancy, but it will really help. So I'll quickly whip through and do all the others. Get them done. fairly quickly to do this. So if the belt was a little bit coarser or a little bit newer, it would be a bit quicker, but still does it. There we go. Right. While I'm here on this tool, I'm going to put the radius on the other end of the tool. Actually, I'm not going to use that one. Yes, I am. There we go. Just put it on the end there, just gently into the belt. You don't have to push hard. Just let the uh, 
the belt do the work. Just try and keep it nice and square with the belt so you get it even all the way along the full length of the, of the, the steel. And that's the sort of effect I'm looking for. And so I'll probably leave it a bit like that for now. And then if I find that's too fat, I can always thin it down, make a, a much thinner one. But I'll start with it as it is. I'll get the small bottom die. Do the same with that. Just have to mind your fingers a bit more with this one. Same principle. Just gently roll it up. Don't leave it in one place for too long. And you've got flat. And uh, obviously it's easy enough to get out, but you've got to start again. And he's losing more and more material. So try and keep it moving. It's a little bit harder to do this than the big one. But we're getting there. Just take your time till it looks about right. And that's not far off camera will focus. That'll do for me. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. It's not bad. That'll do for me for starters. So, I've never used one of these tools before, so it's all new to me. So it's all experimentation. Right. What we're going to do now is there you go you see the I'll just take the edges off a little bit with the sander just to take the sharp bit off so this is the final one and this is the one where I'm going to put the holes in um, so I'm going to weld it back together I'm just going to put a tack on each side it doesn't need to be massive but you know, reasonable size tack. So I'll get ready to do that. Just turn the welder on. Alright, I've lined it up just by eye. Made sure, sure it's uh, flush. Hold it together, give it a quick tack. That's it, that's all it needs. One little spot. It's come away at the back a bit. It's pulled, which I knew it would. So we've got a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to try and get a clamp on it, just pull it back in. I've got a nasty feeling. My big clamps are at home. And this one, no, it just won't quite fit. That's a shame. I took my big ones home to do some woodwork. Uh, never mind. We'll just have to bodge it, we'll push it together somehow. It's not far away, it's not going to harm, harm much. You know, it's a uh, fag paper down there really, but it'd be nice if it was a bit closer. Yeah, I think if I put my glove on and hold it, that'll do the job. Yeah, that's enough. It's good enough for me. That's it. That's all you need. A couple of tacks on each side. That'll hold it while we can drill it. So I need to mark it off now. It's 60mm wide. So I'll probably do it about 20 and 20. So we've got like thirds. But let's get my tape measure out and have a look. See what it looks like. Right, let's have a little look. Of course, I've moved out of shot now. Just, that's better. But you still can't see what I'm up to, so perhaps if I turn the tape round. Right, here you go. Now, if I did it at sort of 15mm, 
from each side. I think they're going to be too close to the sides, to the sides really. I want to keep because bearing in mind, if we do it twenty and twenty, it might be a bit better because if it's too close to the edge, it's going to be sort of trying to distort it. So yeah, I'm going to go for twenty and twenty. Give it a quick centre pop, right on the join. There you go. I'll go over to the drill and drill it. Right, I haven't bothered to set this up in the vice or anything like that. I'm just going to put a bit of gel up on the pilot. i pilot a couple of holes through this. Fairly easy to drill this stuff. I say it's it's EN I think it's EN 38B or something or other. Um, it's basically mild steel. It's a little bit more uniform than the, the black bar that you normally buy. Perfect for these sort of dies. Buy it at a ten foot length you can get quite a lot of dies out of it. And it's fairly close tolerance, it's not as much as ground bar but it's you know it's good enough for this job. Right, that's the pilot's done. Now I've decided I'm going to stick a 10mm and a 12mm which is basically 3, 8 and half inch. Um, they're two popular sizes. If I find I've got use for 6mm and 8mm I'll make myself another one with a 6 and 8 in them. But, uh, I think 10 and 12 is going to be about the most useful for me, personally. Could even make a bigger one, 3 quarter, 20 mil. But uh, I'll leave that till I've got a job for it. Right, take the 10 mil out, stick 12 mil in. Bit more jollop. Really good stuff this cutting paste. It uh, saves the tool and makes the bit cut easier, much easier. You can just feel it, it does, it's not sort of grating, it's, it's gliding through much more than without it. There you go, done. There's your holes. So I'm just going to grind those tacks off and we're good to go. I've just got a flap disc in this grinder and it's a, a pretty worn out one. Let's take the burrs off. And I'm just going to smooth this tack off. I'm not going to grind into the material, just literally take the top of it off, although it will still have penetrated, hopefully, good tap, and that will come apart, there you go, done, there's your holes, even if I've got them the wrong way around, that's better. See what I mean? If you'd have taken the cut through the middle, you would have they wouldn't be quite round. So I'm just going to take these little tiny bits left from the weld. Just clean them up. Jobs are good. Un. Still got 
got some muck in there from the cutting. Um, yeah, pleased with them. I think the only thing I might do is there's a slight burrs in the edge there. I'm just going to run a, a very blunt file around that edge. I don't want to take the edge off. I just want to or get rid of the edge. I just want to clean it up because it's a, just a tad untidy. And that's it. Now I've decided to have a go at another one. I wasn't going to do this, but I've got it up in the saw now. We'll cut it off. And we'll see if it'll work. It could go completely wrong. I've been thinking about this one all the time I've been making the others. And as the others went so well, I thought we'll give it a go. Right, you'll notice also that I've cut this the full length. I haven't cut the 50mm off the bottom. So I haven't got a 50 and a 135. It's all in one because this time I do want to cut through it um, to make the, the job. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drill through it widthways with a 7mm drill. If it was narrow, it'd be a piece of cake, but going through this depth the chances of it coming out the other side in the middle are very slim and I'm using a I'm going through with the size I want I'm not putting a pilot through um, and I'm using a fairly new drill I don't think I've sharpened it and although I can sharpen drills pretty good you always get them not quite 100% if you're not using an actual machine to clean them up uh, to, to sharpen them up and so they tend to, to waver a little bit. Obviously when you're going through thin stuff it doesn't matter. You know, half inch, inch, whatever. It doesn't really show. But going through this amount of thickness, 60 mil, I wanted a drill that will stay fairly, fairly central. I wanted to put this in my big vise that's, that I'm resting on, but I couldn't wind the drill up the table up, it's seized up a bit, I think it's just gone a bit rusty or I'll never wind it up and down and I can't get in because it's my welder's behind it so I've just put it in the hand vise on top of the vise so it should all be fairly level because normally I do it on that bit of wood and that's certainly not particularly level just trying to give myself a chance to get this fairly straight It's not going badly so far. We're we getting there. Oh bugger. The drills come loose. Oh, I'm just gonna stop that and retighten the drill because it's come a little bit loose for some reason. back in the hole. Obviously with it being so deep the swarf sometimes doesn't come out and it tends to bind which it's doing now. It's just binding a little bit. So you might need to just do what that I've done there and just bring it up, clear it out more often than you normally would. Now that's reached its stop so I'm going to have to Pull the drill down even more, just a touch, because we're almost there. But I've reached as far down as the drill press will go. So I'll just stick the drill out a little bit more. Done. Through. Moment of truth. Is it going to be in the middle? Cool, blimey. I'm chuffed with that. That has come out as good as I could expect, or could could wish for no more. Look at that. Bang through the middle. And now I am going to cut it. Um, 
I'm going to use a little slitting disc just to whip through there and uh, you'll see what it's going to turn into once I've cut it. So I'm going to go and mark it and line it up in the vise ready for cutting. All right, I've clamped it up, I've marked it, clamped it up and I'm going to use that piece on top as a guide to run this slitting disc down. Now this is um, 0.8 of a mil disc. They're great discs, they're meant for sheet metal, not really meant for anything else. But if you're careful with them, don't push on them. Just let the disc do the job. They're a good tool. That went through nicely, so I'm just going to carry on and go through the bottom. It's amazing what sort of discs and flaps discs and conditioning discs and all sorts of things there are out there if you look around. They do make your life a lot easier. Done. Alright, let's see if it's come up as I expected. Now I'm really pleased with this. This camera will focus. It's, come on, focus, 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 there you go. I'm really chuffed. I couldn't have asked for much better than that. That's come up lovely. And as you can see, I've not lost an awful lot, but I have lost a bit from the cut, but that's fine, I wanted that. In fact, I probably could have used a one mil thing. Anyway, I've got to take this edge off next. I'm going to take it off about 45. On all four corners, these two. On the top tool, it'll focus again. So about 45, both sides, on both bits. So I'm going to stick it in the vise, do it by eye. Just going to stick it in at about 45, something like that, and run across the top. And I'm going to use a, a blunt flap disc. Blunt flap discs are great because they still cut, they're not as aggressive as when they're new, they're a bit more controllable. If you're doing something small like this, absolutely perfect. I'm just gently running across the top. Yeah, it looks nice. Just so that the um, edge comes to a bit of a point. I don't want to lose the edge that I'm coming down to. I'll just go gently. You could do it with a file I suppose but I'm lazy. I could probably put it up in a machine if you've got one. No, that don't look bad to me. Get the uh this is this conditioning disc I was on about. And I used it on a another job the other day. I wanted it to be a bit pucker. And uh, I think it's plastic impregnated with something. They don't last long, but boy, do they give a lovely finish. I'm just going to clean these edges up with that. Let's see the results. Now then, come on, focus, focus, focus. No, it's not going to do it. Let's zoom out. And try again. Right, that's focus now. And you can see what I was after. I've achieved it. It's fairly even along the full length. Well, I don't know really why I want the full length because I probably will only be putting in bits of bar at five eight or three quarter maybe through the middle of it. But it's nice when it comes up. Come on, focus. Yeah, it's nice when it comes up as expected. I'm really pleased with that. Didn't expect that to be, or to go as well as that. So there you go, there's another tool. So, 
let's have a look at the uh, results. Right, before we start, I just want to show you, point out that I've put uh, a hole in the bottom of this. Um, it's about a 8mm hole, I think. I think it's about 8mm, yeah, about 8mm. Um, basically, it comes up where the bottom tool goes, bottom die. And I thought if you've got your die in there and you've got hot metal there, you're going to get scale and muck and all sorts going down there and it could jam it up, which would make life pretty awkward. So I put a hole in there so you can just put a punch in there, bang it out. Simple as that. So that's just something you wanna, might want to think about if you're making one yourself. This is the latest one I've just done. It'll just about fit in there. It's a bit taller than the others. And I'll radius the top of that one. Yeah, lovely. Fits nice. I wonder if there might be a little bit too much play in my dies, but I don't know. Till I actually try it, you'll never know. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. I think that's going to make a nice decoration on some steel. So I guess now I've got all my five dies. Well, at least I might use some of them. I suppose the next thing be to demonstrate it. So I suppose I'd better light the fire, give it a go, show them working. So that's going to be the next video. So keep watching. Thanks for watching today. Hope that's been of use and we'll catch you on the next one.